Okay, thank you very much. So now, welcome, for real. How are you? Uh, thank you for coming back from the break. Uh, I hope you don't sleep. Um, so my name is Sebastián García. I'm working in Cheveute University in a project called Stratosphere. And I'm going to talk about malware behavior in the network, a deep analysis with machine learning, not Deep learning, no, no, it's, it's a trick, right? It's deep analysis with machine learning. So here, who is actually looking at packets and, and security in the network? Who is ne network people? We have here network people, oh, nice. I like network people, no? So, so the problem here usually is that, okay, remember there, you see the slides, if you, if you want to follow this. Um, in Stratosphere, we are starting, uh, actually it's just one year now, a project to use machine learning as free software. And with this machine learning, we're implementing a behavioral intrusion detection system, a behavioral intrusion prevention system in the future. So we are creating this software based on our research on machine learning, and the goal is to protect NGOs and civil society organizations. Um, uh, this presentation is gonna be very short, but we are focusing on NGOs because they don't have the resources to protect themselves. They don't have the, the money, right? They don't have the time. So they can do, cannot buy very expensive solutions. So we are going, we are giving them a solution that they can use for free using machine learning. So why we are analyzing this in the network? We are looking at how the malware and the normal computers, computers behave in the network. So what we are doing is that we are taking flows, so no packets, no data, just metadata. We are taking the flows and from the flows, we are creating a string of letters. So how we are doing this? From one flow, we go to three features. It doesn't matter, it's size, periodicity, and duration of each flow in the network. And we group together these, and based on these three features, we assign a letter. You can see here an example of the Botrack botnet, and this botnet, each flow there, this is just an example, right? Each flow is being assigned a different letter. And the letter is telling us which is the size, which is the duration, and which is the periodicity. So if the flow is very periodic, as is usually the case with malware, only looking at the letters, you can say, hey, I don't know what it is, but you are behaving like a botnet. Or you are behaving very suspiciously or very periodic. I don't know what you are, I don't care, I cannot know what you are, but your, how you are doing this in the network is very specific, right? And this is based on the idea on how each of you is using the computer. So the way you chat, the way you check emails, the way you go to IRC, it, you are doing it in a specific way, and at some point, that can be used to identify that behavior. So, we are going to, <coughs> sorry, we are going to see some behaviors of usual suspects here. The first one is the Geodo or Geodo botnet. Uh, I want to show you here some example. So, this is, this is the console of Stratosphere testing framework. You can download it for free from our site. And what I want to show you is how it looks like the behavioral patterns of a normal computer in the network, right? So let me see here. So the normal example is B5. I want to show you B5 there. And what you're looking at is very different, very, uh, sorry, um, each connection in the network, it's this line here, so this is a source IP address, destination IP address, destination port and protocol, and each time you see a flow in there, let me run it again, something smaller. Each time you see a flow in this connection, like in this case, this is DNS, you will see a letter there, okay? So you will see one letter and one symbol for each flow in that connection. So for example, here, he's accessing some web page. Here, another web page. You can see encrypted ones, right? Another web page. The red one is DNS, that one there. Let me make this smaller so you can see the complete behavior, right? So let me see. I want to show you this very, something like that. 
Okay, so you can continue having connections, right? So look at this one, for example. You have 99, and then you have point, I, point, I, point. So looking at this, I can say, okay, because the letters from A to I identify periodic connections, this is a periodic connection. But the point is telling me that it's very, very fast less than one second between flows. This is, this is too fast for the botnet. This actually, this is not suspicious at all. This is a normal web page every time you go to some place. So what we are looking at here is the behavior of each connection and also the behavioral patterns of the host. So all the stuff that you are doing in your computer, right? So if you look at this, I will show you now uh, the Geodo botnet, right? So I will stop this. And the geodo botnet was, was, was four. The data set four, right? And so look at this. This is the geodo botnet. And you can very quickly see that there is another pattern here, right? This is completely different from a normal user. You will see that Geodo is connecting to something like 15 command and control servers, and then he's doing uh, in each of these connections and in A plus, A plus, A plus, which tell me this is very periodic and the time between the flows is something like one minute, and this is identifying the connection very precisely, right? And not only that, you can see that the group behavior is very significant. When you look at this, you say, hey, this is, this is completely different from what, I, what we saw previously, right? So I will show you another botnet now. I will show you the botnet that is called Upatre there. So it's three, the data set three. I'm changing just the data sets in there. And you can see here in Upatre that it's also using a lot of command and control servers. And on each of these connections, it's sending flows in a very specific pattern, right? In this case, you see the letters S star, S star, comma, S star, comma, right? So looking at this, in time, the group behavior of all the hosts, it may be possible, the research is still ongoing for the host behavior, it may be possible to identify the behavior of the complete host very, very precisely, right? So if you look at this, if you look at this, OK, this is actually to be. I would love to make it smaller. Let me see. OK. What I want to show you is that some of these connections, like this connection here, right, is having a very different pattern. So actually, it's possible to differentiate different type of command and control servers looking at this behavior, right? So what's the idea with this? The idea is that we can analyze these behaviors, and we can say, OK, look at this. Compared with the normal behavior, Geodo is using 14 command and control IPs. It's using a frequency between 3, 20, three minutes, 20 seconds in the first phase. Remember the A plus, A plus. And when it's changing to V plus, V plus, the frequency of the periodicity is 17 minutes, 20 seconds. And in the case of Upatra, it's using 15 command and control IPs. It's using one minute between one IP and the next. So it's sending flows to one IP, and then to another IP, and to another IP. And it's going back to the same connection after 34 minutes precisely. So I will say something here. But this looks exactly like the behavior and the thinking of a machine to me. Right? You can look at this and say, hey, come on. This is not human in here. It's very precise. Everything is very, very timing. The numbers are very round. So there is an automatic behavior in here. And this is part of the detections that we are doing, right? So what are we doing with this? The behaviors are very nice, but how are we working with this? And what we are doing is we are creating a mark of change with the transition probabilities from one letter to the other. So we see the strings of letters, and we say, hey, from A to B, B to C, C to D, we compute the probabilities, and then we create a Markov change model that can identify that precise connection. So each of those connections have a model that we can store in the network and we can use later. So with these behaviors that we are creating of known malware, not malware that we are running, 
we create a database of known behavior, right? And later, we go to an unknown network, we go to an unknown traffic, we create the letters again, and we say, which is the probability that these unknown letters are generated by this Markov change model? And then we start comparing, and we say, no, no, actually, those letters were not generated with this model. Oh, what about this model? Not with this model. And this one, uh, actually, yeah, they were generating with this model. So we there, we can make a detection and say, hey, I don't know what you are, but you are very, very similar to Upatre Botnet, right? So go there, check it. This is suspicious, right? So this is a very, very broad idea. I'm going to conclude in here. Uh, you can go and find all, all the details about this on the web page, on the papers. You can download the software. You can create your own models. You can run this live with our software, Stratosphere Linux IPS, and you can try to see what's going on, right? So it's up to you to try it. So for conclusion, so we say that malware can have very identified behavior. So malware is having some patterns that are completely different from normal computer. And the behaviors are useful for analysis and verification. And more important, the behaviors are useful for detection. So do we have errors? Yeah, of course we have errors. Everyone has errors. If somebody's telling you there are no errors, don't believe her or him. Right? There are errors, yes, of course. False positive, a lot. False negative, a lot. The thing here is to be open about this. That's why the free software is so important. To be open and tell everyone, hey, this is what we can do. This is what we cannot do. Because we don't want to replace antiviruses, or we don't want to replace uh, IDSs. We are just another, another layer. We are just another, another uh, security measure in your network. One very important thing is that we are focusing on the traffic that is leaving your organization. So we don't care about how you are being attacked. We care if those attacks were successful and now you are exfiltrating data. So what we are looking at is how your computers behave in the network. And there you can say, hey, mm, I think you are infected, right? I'm not sure, maybe not, but, but it looks like you are infected. So, and finally, Machine learning is very, very tough. If you are working in machine learning, you know what I'm talking about. But I think that slowly and with a lot of verification, it's improving and showing good results. And finally, Stratosphere, now it's offered as a software that you can download, but also as a cloud-based service in the university, so NGOs can send the flows after signing NDAs, of course, and a lot of privacy issues in the middle. They can sign, send us the flows, and we can give them alerts in real time. And we are doing this because, actually, most NGOs don't, don't know how to install these, don't have the people even to look at the alerts, right? So they cannot install something so, so complex in a network. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. If you are interested in collaborating or something, just get in contact with me. Um, and free for questions if you want. Could you see the letters? Yeah, there. It, it was big enough. Yeah. No. So any questions? No questions? Questions? No. Letter? Mark of chains. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone so knows thank you. Chain. Yeah, one question here. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your presentation. And uh, I would like to ask you uh, do you have some guides or uh, documentation if I can, if I want to use the stratosphere and try to, uh, for example, at home, use it with Churisomnia or something like that? Yes. Well, actually, if you go here to the web page, uh, we try to put there everything. So you can go there and find the documentation and the download and how to. It's actually it's easy. And we, in the research blog there, you can see an example, OK, how to use the stratosphere like from scratch. OK, get the pickup. Oh, OK, 
use stratosphere. This is the command for importing the data set, then create the models. The most difficult part is not the commands, but OK, understanding, OK, the models, command, actually is creating the letters. Ah, OK, right? Because this is the, the very most strange stuff. But if it's not clear, this is work in progress and it's in a university, right? So just write to me and say, hey, I cannot do it, so I can improve it or whatever, right? Or, or maybe you find errors or bugs, so you tell us, hey, this is not working, stuff like this, yeah. More questions? No? Behaviors? No behaviors? No network? The network people? So no questions, I think. No questions? So thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for thank you coming. To, thank you for your presentation. <laughs>